Back in Laos, in a small village, there was a girl who had just recently died. They were holding her funeral all day and all night. By then, most of the people had already left. There was only the immediate family left and a few guards. This was only the first night and the family was preparing to sleep. The guards were also preparing to sleep outside with one guy on duty for the first shift. Outside the house, on the far right side was a large peach tree with ripe peaches. The guards decided to sleep on the right side of the house so that in case they get hungry, they could just grab a peach to munch on. Later, after everyone had fallen asleep, the first guard was up against the house sitting and staring into the night. The moon was out so there was enough light for him to see. Soon, he heard someone moving about in the house. Then, he heard a voice saying, I'm so hungry. Thinking it was just one of the family members, he brushed it off. As he was listening, he heard the sounds of feet dragging along the floor. Why is that person dragging their leg making noises, he thought. Then, he heard the door open, and he thought that they had come out to pee or something. Instead, he saw a girl walking out, coming towards his side of the house. As the girl got closer, he recognized that she was the dead girl that just passed away. At this point, he got very scared, so he immediately closed his eyes. He heard her drag her feet past him and his friends and walked towards the tree. As she got further away from him, he slowly opened his eyes and he saw her picking fruits and eating them. One of his friends was sleeping on the ground next to him, so he gently kicked at his friend to try and wake him up. After kicking a couple of times, his friend would not wake up, so he kicked a bit harder. His friend grunted, which made the dead girl look his way. Again, he pretended to sleep. She kept staring at him for several long minutes before turning back and eating again. When it was time for the roosters to crow, the dead girl slowly dragged herself back to her bed and covered herself with her blanket. When morning came, his friends woke up. They questioned him and asked him why he didn't wake up the next guy to switch. That's when he told them what he saw, but they didn't believe him. If you don't believe me, then you can stay up first, but keep quiet, is what he told his friends. The following night, his buddy, the one who got kicked, stayed up first. Later on, he too heard someone rustling inside the house saying that they were hungry. He was trying not to be scared and brushed it off as one of the family members. But soon after, the girl came out. Afraid, the second guy slowly crept down and laid next to his buddy on the ground. As she dragged herself across, he squeezed his eyes shut and held his breath. After she had gone past them and reached the tree, she started eating the peaches. The second guy was scared, so he started pinching the first guy to wake him up. The first guy woke up and he was going to elbow him, but the second guy quickly whispered, The girl is up over there. He took one peek and then quickly pulled his blanket back on top over his head. The second guy did the same thing. All night. They listened to her chewing on the peaches until morning came when she returned back inside to the house. This time, after everyone had woken up, the two buddies went to the father and told him what had been happening. He did not believe the two of them. If you don't believe us, then you can go look at her hands and feet, they told the father. And so, the father went to his dead daughter's bed and pulled off her cover. He looked and saw that her hand had some red stain from the peaches. Her feet was covered in dirt. They quickly ran out of the room and waited until a shaman got there. After the shaman heard what had happened, he went outside and grabbed a thick peach branch. Then he sharpened one side, went into the house, and staked the girl. Afterwards, they quickly buried her body instead of traditionally waiting for the fifth day to do it. My grandma had just passed away, and today was her funeral. She was a very kind person, but never let a rude thing slide. She most of all disliked rude people. 
Most of the family members attended the funeral as I did. After all the rituals, we were allowed to see my grandpa one last time. We just watched her, gave her our blessings, and moved along for the next people in line. Then, my sister-in-law came. As she was staring at my grandmother's face, she said out loud, Wow, why has she turned so unpleasant and partly rotten in such little days? Nothing happened, and she walked on by. Because they came from out of town, later that night they slept at our house. As everyone was getting ready to sleep, my sister-in-law was alone when she heard super heavy footsteps, like a few hundred pounds of meat, pounding to the ground, walking from the living room. She asked her husband if he heard anything, but he responded no. She freaked out. The sound of the footsteps got closer and closer. She yelled at her husband to wake up and check. Just when her husband stood up, the door slammed open. Her husband, looking at the door, saw that there wasn't anybody. But to my sister-in-law's shock, she saw my grandmother standing at the door. Her face was the exact opposite of beauty and perfection. It seemed uneven, as if her face was about to fall off any second. Her tongue was hanging out as if she had no more muscle or control of it. Rotten fluid was slowly coming out of her mouth as she tried to speak. Her eyes were huge, as if she was looking for revenge, blood gushing out. My grandmother walked closer and closer to my sister-in-law as if she was expecting something. And then, in very unclear moan, the creature said out loud, Am I pretty yet? Still, with her tongue hanging out and the rotten fluid falling out of her mouth. My sister-in-law cried and cried, calling for help. Everyone in the house woke up and rushed to her room. My dad knew exactly what to do because he had heard what my sister-in-law said at the funeral. He quickly told my sister-in-law to kneel down and apologize. As she did, my grandmother disappeared. This happened to me during my grandfather's funeral. He died in March of 2012. He had been a smoker his whole life, and it finally caught up to him. He died of lung cancer. A week after he passed away, we held his funeral at the funeral home on Arcade Street in St. Paul, Minnesota. If you live in Minnesota, you know which one I'm talking about. That funeral home has always been creepy because the lighting is bad and that place is just dirty in general. The bathroom is especially dark. We were on the ground kowtowing to my grandfather and I needed to use the bathroom. I told my little cousin to come with me but she refused, she was too scared. So I went by myself. I was not scared because there was a bunch of my other cousins in the room next door. I was using the bathroom and I heard someone come in. I thought it was just one of my cousins using the bathroom. Between the crack of the bathroom door. I could see the shadow of a person standing there. No big deal, I thought. One of my cousins was waiting for me to finish, since there was only one stall. As I got up, I heard the person come towards me. Instead, it wasn't footsteps. It was more like flip-flops shuffling on the floor. I thought it was weird since it was raining. Why would someone wear flip-flops, especially to a funeral? I did my business and was about to turn the doorknob to get out of the bathroom when I heard a loud sound. It was like a cat meowing. It was so loud that I actually jumped. It sounded like a cat, but it was very loud and seemed to come from everywhere in the room. I opened the door as fast as I could and there was no one there. I ran upstairs and left home for the day. I never returned to the funeral. I only went to the cemetery to bury my grandfather. I finally understand why mo people don't like cats. They are a sign of ghosts and demons. Whatever it was, it looked human but was not. Has anyone experienced anything like that at funeral homes? This is a true story that I just heard from my mother and my auntie who lives in Sacramento. This past weekend, there was a Hmong funeral held in Sacramento. I'm not sure if it was a Vang family or a Xiong family, but I'll just say that it was a Hmong family. Anyways, 
My mother's great-grandpa passed away because of sickness. During the funeral, there were drummers, thing blowers, and also relatives who attended the funeral. Here's what I heard from them. During the funeral, Etukang was still performing for my grandfather, when all of a sudden, he just fell to the ground unconsciously. My uncle and other men had to call the ambulance to help that Tukang. The day after he fell down, he was at the hospital. Something strange was happening. The young man was not waking up. The doctor said that he had a 50% chance of going into a coma. But they couldn't figure out what was the problem because he was just as healthy as any other usual man. But the doctor mentioned that the Tukang did have a heart attack during that moment he fell down. My mother, in this case, thought that maybe the young man saw something that he shouldn't have and automatically fainted while he was performing. As of what my mother told me, a Kung practitioner must always finish performing their song individually. If they decide to get up and not finish, then they will be troubled by the deceased person. This must have meant that the Tukan did his job, but he must have saw something while he was performing. I'm not sure if he's awake yet, but one last thing I heard my mom say was that perhaps the great-grandpa took the soul of the Tukan with him. This is a short story I heard while camping. There was a Hmong family whose grandma had just passed away. During the funeral, the family recorded the event so that they could watch it later in remembrance of their beloved grandmother. One night, the family decided that they would watch the movie because they all missed grandma so much. As the family was watching the movie, they heard a voice from behind them ask, What are you guys watching? They all turned to see who asked, and to their surprise, it was their dead grandma. Everyone was so scared and shocked, they didn't know what to do or say. Then, the dad got up and said loudly in a stern voice, Mother, you are dead. We love you, but you must go and be reborn. As you can see, we are watching your funeral ceremony. Please leave us in peace. The grandma then looked up at the TV and saw herself. She started to cry, and then walked away. This happened to my dad. It's not really scary, just a bit creepy. He was to play the funeral drum at someone's house. This is the ceremony where they let the spirit go after the funeral. Food was being prepared outside. As my dad was drumming, a piece of meat fell and hit his hand and onto the ground. He was a bit confused how the hell that happened. The meat looked dry, like it had been left out for a while, but the food had just gotten done. My parents then came home. A few days later, we went to an aunt that is a psychic to do some other business. My mom brought it up to my aunt for her to see what it was. My aunt has the ability to see and converse with spirits. She said that there was a little punzong there and that it was sorry. There was a lot of them at the ceremony. Traveling back and forth, it grabbed a lot of meat and decided to rest on top of the drum. A piece of meat fell through its hand and hit my dad's hand. It said for my dad to not be scared. It wasn't intentional and decided to go on its own way. Creepy how they are all there and we just don't see them. This happened to my sister and her husband around 15 to 17 years ago. It was during a time when Hmong people started to make movies. My brother-in-law loved cameras, so he went to an orphanage movie. I don't know what that means, but it's part of the story, anyways. One day, an elderly lady in our town passed away, so my brother-in-law asked for permission to tape the funeral. On the third day of the funeral, he got closer and recorded the deceased lady. He said that he saw her eyes blink. Three days after the funeral, his nose was bleeding heavily. My sister, a shaman, she tried all traditional remedies to make his nose stop bleeding, but it would not stop. One night, my brother-in-law said to my sister that they should switch sleeping spots because he was getting sat on every night. 
that deceased lady came to sit on my brother-in-law, but it was my sister in his spot. Because my sister is a shaman, her shaman spirits did not allow the deceased lady to touch her. So right away, she started chanting. The spirit of the elderly lady said to my sister that she did not wish for her deceased face to be shown on film. She wanted my sister to go get the tape and take it to her home physically. When my sister came to, it was 2.30 a.m. and she found herself walking back home. When my sister got home, all of my brother-in-law's films were turned over and he was sitting in bed. None of their kids were awake. The next morning, her kids said that before bed, they saw an elderly lady in their house. After my sister returned the film, the lady was gone forever. This story happened back in Laos before the war. My grandma told me a story about her family. This family had only one mother, a son, and a daughter-in-law. They were very poor because their father had died a long time ago. The daughter-in-law does not like the mother and doesn't treat her like a mother. She was very evil to her since the mother was also blind as well. Because they were so poor and food was hard to come by, the son went hunting one day and would not be back until after three to four days. On the same night, the daughter-in-law was due to give birth. The mother was there to help keep her company and help her. Even though she was blind, she used her hands to feel the baby and help her daughter-in-law give birth. The next day, the daughter-in-law was cooking for herself to eat because her husband wasn't home to help her. The mother came and asked if there was anything for her to eat. The daughter said, yes, but you will have to wait, I'm still cooking. So the mother went back outside. After the daughter-in-law finished cooking, she told her mother to come and eat. But since the mother is old and blind, she will have to eat outside. The mother asked what she cooked, and she replied, rice and meat. When the mother ate her bowl of food, it was really hard and she couldn't eat the meat. No matter how hard she tried, she could just not eat. Luckily, one of her cousins came by and visited her. So she asked the cousin what kind of meat did her daughter-in-law cook for her and why was it so hard? She has been trying to eat it all morning but could not. When the cousin looked into the bowl, all she saw was the baby's womb. The cousin cried and told the mother of what the daughter-in-law fed her. The mother was very sad and depressed, so she cursed her daughter-in-law. I love you and my son very much. I have not done anything to you, so why are you so mean and heartless to me? Why would you even cook the baby's womb to me and tell me to eat it? You lied to me that it's meat, so I wouldn't know so that I could eat it. When I die, you are going to carry me to my grave or I'm not leaving at all. One day, you will have to pay back for what you have done to me. May heaven above see how evil you are. The daughter-in-law heard, but she didn't care much because she did not believe in karma. Not too long, the poor mother passed away. They held a funeral for her, and after three days, they carried her to her grave. But for some reason, they could not lift her. She was extremely heavy, and even if they tried to carry her through the door, she would not fit. Back then, houses were made out of thatch and bamboo, so they tore down the wall. Despite this, for some reason, they could not carry her out of the house. The evil daughter-in-law laughed and told everyone, Well, when my mother-in-law was still alive, she kept on saying that she wanted me to carry her when she died. The daughter-in-law took it as a choke, but after saying it to everyone, they forced her to carry her mother-in-law because they all ran out of ideas, and if that's the only way to carry her to the grave, then she has to. They forced the mother onto the back of the daughter-in-law, and she carried her outside of the house. The daughter could see over her shoulder that the corpse's face was turning green and blue. A long tongue was hanging out, blood was everywhere, and the face was smiling at her. The daughter got scared and walked faster to the grave. When everyone got there, they told her to put her mother-in-law into the grave. She tried, but somehow, 
her skin was stuck to the corpse's skin. Everyone tried to cut it off, but the daughter-in-law would tell them not to because it was her skin and it hurt really bad. They would try to cut off the mother's skin, but it would always end up cutting the daughter's. At this point, it was getting late and everyone was afraid. So instead, they all decided to bury the daughter with her mother-in-law. She was crying and asking for forgiveness, but nothing happened. And so, the group decided to bury her alive with her mother-in-law. One day, the daughter's real mother came to visit her. She cried and she cried, asking her daughter, Daughter, are you still down there? Are you hungry? Where are you now? Then she would hear her daughter reply, Mother, I miss you. I am still here, but now on top of my mother-in-law. I am hungry. The next day, her mother would go back to the grave and grieve and call for her again. This time, her daughter replied, Mother, I am now on the bottom and my mother-in-law is on top of me. On the third day, her mother went back to the grave and called out for her again. Daughter, are you still down there? Yes, mother, I am now on top, but I feel that there's something crawling around me. On the fourth and final day, she went back to the grave and called her daughter, but this time there was no response. And so her mother cried and cried her eyes out and went home. The evil daughter-in-law finally died in the grave. Thank God she deserved it. Who even does that? Sick, twisted people. <laughs>